Munch 2 Mesami, this is Nick from TBT, AirRifleTuning.com. Today I'm going to show you how to take apart an HW97 or indeed an HW77. Um, this is my HW97, uh, the more astute amongst you might notice it's in a non-standard stock, it's in a stone laminate CS800 stock, one of two made, they won't be making any others because it's broke all the tooling, also it's considerably shorter than a standard K, and that's because I shortened it from that end to make it, um, to make it shorter. Uh, I was shooting it yesterday, um, I've been running this probably for the last five years with a, an 8mm short stroke, one of our Maxi Pro kits, at about 10.5 foot pounds. Having an absolute whale of a time with it, but I was also using my HW80 uh, running at 19 foot pounds and my HW95 running at 15 foot pounds, which is legal here, by the way. Um, so I thought it would be nice to try this at full power. So today I'm going to take out the Maxi Pro kit and replace it with a Maxi kit. So. When I decided to do that, this morning on Facetubes, there was somebody asking about fitting a, a, a kit to a 97 running at full power. I thought, well, I could do that. I've been wanting to do that since yesterday. While I'm at it, I might as well do a video on how to take the gun apart. Because the last one I did was probably five or six years ago. Um, it was done, filmed on New Year's morning, quite early on New Year's morning. Um, I wasn't in the best condition, but my brother was there. It was at my mum's, and I thought, well, while he's there and he can press the buttons on the camera, I'll do a video. It's about time I did a new one. I will be doing a new HW81 later as well. So anyway, this is my rifle, um, and I am now going to take it apart. This is all going to be in real time. So go make a cup of tea. There's no, not going to be any fancy editing or anything like that, because uh, I don't know how to do that. Um, first thing we need to do is remove the scope thusly put that somewhere safe next with an appropriate tool remove the stock screws thus enabling the stock to be removed from the gun it's worth pointing out that when I do this I like to have a little tin to one side or pot to one side pop everything into because then when you come to find it, it's still where you left it, especially when you're using, I mean, I'm down in my subterranean basement workshop today, because it's raining outside, otherwise I would have done it outside, but first time in a month it's rained, so it's like, boo. I wanted to do this video, so I thought I'd do it down here. This is normally where I do my reloading, working on my guns, got an indoor range down that way, only 10 metres, but it's perfect for just sitting and plinking while I'm thinking of things to do. A couple of radio control toys there as well, just, just a few shelves of them. Bam, 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 bam. Like I said, all in real time. Talk amongst yourselves. Now, that whole trigger should trigger guard should lift out once this screw at the back is released like that put that over there now the stock can lift off I'll put that safely over there here's a lovely stock that one absolutely fantastic now next 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 we need to remove the trigger now I find a block of wood on the table very useful when it comes to removing pins because you can put the gun like that and then you knock the pins through without them going onto the table. Now, using the correct tools is always a benefit. I'm using brass punches, brass hammers, and stuff like that simply because they do a better job. Although, for that last push, I need to use that rod instead. Right, now, the safety just fell out. The little spring that comes with that safety there it's known as a ping fuck it because it goes ping and then you go off. Oh, uh, keep an eye out for that when you're taking the trigger out. They're tricksy little buggers. If you do lose one, you can make one from a spring out of a biro. If you get a, a biro, I mean, not necessarily this one. I don't know what this one's got in it. But the little springs you get in the front of biros, um, you can quite often cut one of those down to, to replace it, which saves a lot of hassle. Now... Remove the safe, uh, the trigger. Next, we're going to remove this nut here, which is locking 
the trigger 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 block thank you trigger block onto the chassis now normally there would be what they call an anti-bear trap device here I take them off it isn't an anti-bear trap device all it does is block the trigger if the sear fails you're still going to lose a finger there is no replacement for proper safety so I take that out because then I can decock the gun if I need to always 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 keep hold of the cocking lever while you're cocking the gun. That's just me, just in case you're wondering why that isn't there and you've got one on your gun. Whether you keep it or not, it's totally up to you. A lot of people like it. I personally don't, but I can see why they've got it, but I'm not a fan. Now, the trigger block needs to come off. This twists off. They're quite often very, very tight, and it is quite often necessary to put something that is the correct fit inside of that slot there, place it down, get a hammer, and give it a bob. Um, now, I'm hoping this won't be necessary today, but we'll have a look. Now, here's my stretchy latex. If, you, if, if your wife's into yoga or anything like that, and she's got some of this, steal some. If she isn't, buy some. It's fantastic, grippy stuff. So hold that onto there. Oh, look at that. Strong like bull. So, we unwind here. Now, as we're getting towards the end of the thread, so there's potential there's going to be preload on that spring there. When you take it off, it's all going to go twang in that direction. When you're down to the last couple of threads there, that end block moves, it wobbles, and you can push it up against the threads, and you can actually feel how much, if any, tension is on that spring. And I can feel it's not an awful lot at all. I mean, if you wanted to be extra safe, get a small screwdriver into that gap there, onto a bit of the spring, and just give it a move, to see if it's under high tension. I can feel this one isn't, so when I take that off, it should be oh, very little preload. Right. Put that to one side. Remove the spring guide top hat. Now this is one that's been shortened. As I say, this was running at ten and a half foot pounds with an eight millimeter short stroke. Uh, there's not much grease on there. Just a bit of bum slide from years ago when I put it together. I'll just uh, grab some tissue to put that on to. Put that somewhere safe. Now, next, we want to remove the cocking arm, this part here. It goes all the way to here. That will enable us to take the compression tube and the piston out. Easiest way to do this is you've got a pin just here, just there. Um, I should get my trusty knocky stick back out, put that onto there. There he goes, found him. Pop him over there. Now, get rid of my block cord because I don't need it. That will all come out. Now, this is a good thing to keep an eye on here. Just down here, that needs to be lifted up to allow that little notchy bit there to come out of the compression tube. That's a weak point in the design, not horrendously bad, but when you're putting it back together, you do need, and pulling it out in fact, you, you need to make sure you get the angle down and it's locked. Angle up and it comes out. If you try and force it in like that, you're gonna break that little spur off. If you don't get the correct angle and you bring it down, you're gonna prise that little end bit off. Now you can get replacements of these easy enough, but I have learnt to my expense more than once in the past to be careful putting that in and out. And that is a top TBT tip there. So, now everything can come out. As you can see, I've got the compression tube blackened on this one. That's because, like I said, this one I've done an awful lot of work to. It's, it's my, my absolute pride and joy. But we've got the uh, compression tube here. Just get a piece of tissue, wipe some of it out. I tend to put the bum side on here, along the bottom of the compression tube, and then a ring of it around the rear. That's so that while it's inside of the gun, it gives all the protection it needs to for protecting moving parts, but at the same time, it doesn't leave the bit in the loading gate that you can see. It doesn't get any lubricant onto that, so it stays nice and clean. Now, you will see at the back here, that the piston is sticking out, I would say about eight millimeters from the compression tube. This is because, voila, which is your actual French, 
there is an eight millimeter short stroke on there. Okay, that's what I've been running in this for running it at 10 and a half foot pounds for UK use. It effectively restricts the movement of the um, piston. I mean, all of this is in the short stroking video. If you're thinking of short stroking, if you're in the UK, Italy, Germany, or any country where you're restricted on power, it's well worth a look. But what you're doing here is effectively you're reducing the swept volume on the 26 millimeter gun to the same as it was on the 25 millimeter piston gun, which was preferred. So this runs better and faster at 12 foot pounds um, than the standard 26. But I won't be using that short stroke on here now because I'm going to put a full size spring in. I'm going to take it up to around about 15, I should think, 15 foot pounds. So there we have it. That is the HW97 taken apart. This is the HW77 as well. Um, again, a question often asked on, on Tins Webs is what's the difference between an HW77 and a 97 and which is best? Inside, this part, the barrel and everything, it's all the same gun. The difference is a slight difference in design of the stock, although they are interchangeable. So if you wanted to put a 97 stock on a 77 or vice versa, you can. But the main thing you'll notice looking at them is the HW77 has open sights, whereas the HW97 has this dummy moderator at the front here. Uh, the 97 is designed for use solely with, uh, with optics on there whereas the 77 can be used with, with open sights that come on it. Now, on reassembly, apart from what I told you about with the cocking arm link there, other thing, when you come to reassemble your trigger, always cock the trigger first before trying to get it into the trigger block. That means you won't be fighting the spring tension of the, the, the sear itself while you're trying to line up the holes to get your pins back through but and this is an important one and we do get a couple of phone calls a week at least about this people phoning up and saying their gun won't cock once you've got it back together remember pull the trigger otherwise the gun won't cock okay if the triggers in the cocked position and you try and cock the gun after reassembly it won't latch and you'll be scratching your head and hopefully then you'll ring me and I'll say pull the trigger um, and there you go this is quite simple. I mean, I don't know how long that's taken me. Not very long at all, I shouldn't think, and I can't really see it on oh, no, 12 minutes. On the screen there with me waffling on as well. Realistically, if you're fitting a TBT kit, or any other kit, um, I mean, fit to, for fitting the, our kits, if you look on the other, other videos we've got on the website, you'll see guides on how to actually fit the kits themselves. But if you're gonna be taking apart your 97 or 77, like this, cleaning it up, polishing, just you only really need to polish that part of the piston there because the rest of it doesn't really make any contact. Um, polishing the piston, you need to degrease inside of the compression tube. Don't polish inside there because the grease needs somewhere to stick, but you need to degrease inside of there. So you're cleaning everything up, looking for burrs, fitting the kit, putting it back together. Realistically, it's a 30 minute job, including a tea break. Most importantly, the 0800 number on the box and in the instructions and on the website is there for you to ring me. If you have any questions at all, call me, we'll go through it, or drop me an email if it's late at night or on a Sunday. I might still call you back anyway, because my hobby is my business. So I'm quite often playing around with guns, even though it might be a bank holiday or in the evening or something like that. In the meantime, enjoy your shooting and uh, I'll speak to you again soon. Thank you very much, bye-bye.